we can visualize it now with color Doppler and we see this uh, reduction in right ventricular function and also the tricuspid regurgitation. What's quite good to see over here is the, the Vena contractor and also a PISA measurement could be possible in this view. I always perform this view, so the inflow view of the right ventricle in the parasternal approach because it gives a lot of information about the right ventricle, about the inflow of the right ventricle, about right ventricular function, about tricuspid regurgitation. And especially in, in some cases, if you cannot visualize tricuspid regurgitation in an apical window, you can always go back to the peristernal window and try it in this view. Why is it so nice? Sometimes the CV Doppler just has the perfect angle to measure uh, systolic pulmonary arterial pressure in this view. To continue with another example, I want to show you another reduction in right ventricular function, but probably it's a different origin. In this case, you see that there must be thickened myocardium. Here's a little bit of a different angulation of the same patient. So the left loop and the right loop, they are the same patient. So this is the same person, but it's a little bit of a different angulation. And here you see probably the interventricular septum. And here you see another parts to the posterior lateral wall of the left ventricle. Here you can see the right ventricular inflow nicer, but you also can visualize that there is a degree of, of right ventricular thickened myocardium as well. So it's not only the left ventricle which has thickened myocardium, but also the right ventricle. In this view, you can see that the opening and the closing of the tricuspid valve is entirely different compared to a healthy individual. And you see that the inflow of the coronary sinus is more prominent. Also, the inflow of the uh, IVC over here is more prominent compared to the healthy individual. This probably is the descending aorta, so this is the inflow, this is the uh, coronary sinus. And both loops show that the tricuspid valve, the anterior and the posterior leaflet of the tricuspid valve, can be nicely differentiated. If we then continue and add color and uh, continuous wave Doppler, in color Doppler we can see nicely, here we can see a little bit of the inflow into the right atrium and the inflow into the right ventricle from the right atrium. But we also see the tricuspid regurgitation. Here you can see tricuspid regurgitation. We can also grade it over here. Here it's probably moderate. And if you place a continuous wave Doppler, you can see that the signal is around three meters per second. So they are elevated systolic pulmonary arterial pressures and it can be measured here quite good because the TR is just perfectly in the angle of the continuous wave Doppler seen over here. The second atypical view of the long axis, I have to admit, I do not perform it on a regular basis, only if I cannot perform it in a peristernal short axis. What is it called? It's the peristernal long axis right ventricular outflow view. What is the outflow? Of course, it's the right ventricular outflow tract, the pulmonic valve and the pulmonic trunk. And you can see it over here, this is the valve, this is the right ventricular outflow tract. You also can see the motion of, or the right ventricular function of the right ventricular outflow tract, which also contributes to overall or global right ventricular function. And here you can see the pulmonic trunk. And this is a, a nice view where you can also measure, um, for example, the uh, pulmonary acceleration time. So if you cannot do that in a peristernal short axis view, I always try to achieve a view in the peristernal long axis to see the outflow as well. And here you see the uh, acceleration time of the pulmonic valve, which is normal in this individual. Here you can also appreciate the color Doppler signal. The color Doppler signal also looks normal. There is no turbulent flow actually to be seen. Here you can see the pulmonic trunk and even parts of the right pulmonary artery and the left pulmonary artery. How is this view acquired? Instead of tilting down so that the beam goes caudally, you tilt up from a peristernal long axis view. You tilt cranially so the beam goes cranially and then you will see the outflow tract of the right ventricle. Place the pulse wave Doppler, try to acquire this view. It doesn't work in all your patients, but in some you will get really nice images there as well.
To summarize it, let's look at the pathological example. There's also the patient we have seen before with probably reduced right ventricular function. We do see here the pulmonic valve, also the opening and the closure even of the pulmonic valve is different. We do see pulmonic regurgitation. It's definitely not severe. We can see the pulmonic trunk and the right pulmonary artery as well a little bit and it seems to be dilated compared to the other images we have seen. Now with these specific views, the atypical views, which at least you should try to learn and, and then use it in the situations you need it, we will conclude the sessions of the personal long access view. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope I didn't miss some views, but with what we have learned and visualized on this specific Ecopack software and with these cases, I think you got quite a broad overview over the topic of the normal and pathological findings of a peristone long axis view. Please post your comments below. Let me know what you think. So if you have any suggestions, if you know any other views, maybe I did miss a view, let me know in your comments. If you did enjoy the video, please don't forget to share, like, subscribe to see more interesting cases, not only of the peristone long axis view, but of all of the views of the heart together. And I will continue with this compact echo series with the peristone short axis view. I hope to see you there and thanks for watching.